This is my favorite, favorite part. Like, I literally, I love this. I, um, in order to sleep last night, I had to take an emergency. Cause I was just like, all right, I cannot wait to go over. Uh, what does it say in your manual? What does this talk about? It's supposed to be releasing what skills? What does it say in there? What does it say in the manual? What does it say in the manual? All right, I, everybody do me a favor. Take a pen and mark right through that missional family thing. You guys still are, but we're just going to call you a church. All right. Uh, right now, we're going to learn some skills that help us identify as church, that, that help us practice healthy church. So do me a huge favor. Mark it out. Also, the next thing I want you guys to do, if anyone refers to this table or while I'm speaking, if I refer to your tables or groups as a table or group and not a church, I want you guys to just yell church. All right. So as I'm talking, I say, you know, hey, guys, we want to see healthy groups started. I want That's church. not right. All right. So, yeah, I want you guys. To, you guys got to correct me. All right. Because we got to get this into our mind. Uh, one thing I want us to Justin did a, a phenomenal job talking through uh, the nine marks of a healthy church. I felt like when I first saw this, I was like, man. Um, this is pretty powerful. Uh, it's powerful because I come from um, when I was in high school, I left the church I grew up in and I went to somewhat of a mega church with like four or five thousand members. Right. And so four or five thousand people can practice this. Right. Would you guys say so? Right. So like if, so five thousand can do this. And all right, I'll, I'll give you a disclaimer. My handwriting is really terrible. I'm used to writing X's and O's on the board, not really like numbers and things of that sort. So yeah, just, just work with me here. All right, so 5,000 can do this, right? You guys, you got me, right? Uh, what about 500? 500 can do this? All right, we cool, cool. All right, what about 50? Can, can we get 50 people doing this? All right, it's about to get tricky. What about five? Yes. Five, five, right, absolutely. Biblically, if we look at Leviticus 26, eight, Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall chase ten thousand. And I like this part. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. I will turn to you and make you fruitful and multiply you, and I and will confirm my covenant with you. Man, isn't that a great promise? That's beautiful, right? Like five of us. Uh, that's a lot more than five of you guys at the table. You guys are going after something. Oh, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it, verse. Look at that. <laughs> All right, look, you guys got to be paying attention. So it's more than five of you at your church, right? And so we're, we're pursuing something much better. All right, we're, we're going, we're trying to be fruitful. We're trying to multiply and uh, can't wait to see this happen. So first thing we're going to do at your church is it's going to get really difficult uh, to name your churches. Um, you know, for me to just call you Till, Team, or, you know, the, <laughs> right. Church. So right now we're going to transfer from the teal church or the church. green church or the blue church over there or the uh, Clemson church. That's a nice name. I don't know. You guys might want to switch it up. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, back there, the boot camp only church. Uh, we're going to get creative now. All right, here we go. In creating your name, I know there's a tendency to, you know, be funny uh, be super creative. Um, I haven't told you guys about the Root Church yet. Uh, so a couple years ago, um, I was like, Burke and Ed said, hey, you work on South Campus. I was like, all right, cool. Started getting in the uh, Wood dorm, uh, which is a, the best dorm, the second best dorm, one of the best dorms on campus. Uh, and so as we're there, we're having a great time. We met a lot of people. Uh, we started forming as a church. And uh, me and all my creativity, I said, guys, I know what we can name the church. We can name it No Place Left Wood. What an awesome name. And then everybody, you know, they're like, they love me. So they're like, yeah, let's go with that, Todd. Uh, and then afterwards, um, I feel like we had our, uh, our yearly, just our yearly disciple making uh, training. And afterwards, we went over the nine marks of a healthy church. They said, Todd, we have the name. We're going to call ourselves the Root Church. And then for me, I'm just like, ah, it's all right, you know, uh, it'll grow on me. And it, and it did. Uh, as a matter of fact, this verse in Jeremiah 17, 9 is a verse, uh, it's a promise that, that we've held. It, it's something that I pray for often 
for our churches in, in, in South Campus. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that real quick, about where your church can meet at. Um, but Jeremiah 17, 9. <coughs> I'm pretty sure it is. Well, maybe it's not. Hold on. Yeah, so, <laughs> goodness, that's probably out of the verse. 27, 9, maybe. Goodness. <laughs> if I've been praying that verse for us, I'm like, goodness. <laughs> it's the wrong one. All right. So, I'll look it up later. All right. So, uh, like a tree firmly planted by the river. Um, that Psalm 1? You know what? I'm going to look it up. No, no yeah, 17.9, the heart's deceitful, right? <laughs> we've, been, we've been going by the wrong verse the whole time. <laughs> I thought we had. Oh, 17.8. All right. 17.8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, for he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and, it, and will not fear when the heat comes. But its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought nor cease to yield fruit. So, yeah, that's a promise. Jeremiah 17. Don't write that one down. Yeah, that's, that's just for us. So out of that, we thought of we had a biblical reference for the root church and then even the churches that came out of it. The tree that was planted by the, the stream, by the water, comes the ministry church. So this verse is a promise that we're claiming to. Uh, right now, you guys are going to name your churches. Hopefully you do this with the Bible open. Hopefully you guys can go to a verse. Be serious, right? Um, a, a lot. Uh, there's a natural tendency to kind of name it something goofy and funny. And maybe that doesn't point to, you know, the seriousness of the church. Maybe that points to just a bunch of friends hanging out. I really like the um, last year, uh, one of the churches here at Link were called Beautiful Feet. And I really like that because, you know, how beautiful are the feet of those who share the good news? Uh, what a great name. So right now, you guys can't steal that name. name. Right now, you can't steal that name. You guys are going to name your church. Somebody is going to tell me the name. You're going to just pick one person when we come back together. I'm going to give you like five, ten minutes. Somebody's going to pick somebody. You're going to pick somebody to, you know, present, say, hey, this is our church's name and this is why. So ten minutes. Ready. Go. Different stories. Uh, we were, um, some of us in here were in a training in uh, California and the guy who was facilitating the training, he said this church in Oakland, they named themselves the First Corinthians Church. It's like almost like they didn't read First Corinthians, right? So uh, whatever name you have, I guarantee you it won't be that bad. <laughs> won't be that bad. All right, here we go. Let's start with the uh, boot camp group. Got you. Thank you, guys. He would have asked him if he would have given him living water. We are in the church of living water. Hey! That's in my hometown, though, so I don't that counts. It's, it's, it's one of them in Rona Rapids. But I, I like that. Living water church. Living water church. All right. Here we go. The Dykus plus Gordon and Caleb. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look at that. I like that. I like that. The Blessed Refuge Church. All right. Coming on around. We are. Yeah, we are. No, no. No, we decided when you're done. We are. Are we? This way. Can we grab something, but we may change it in the future? It's called Shipwreck! Okay, S H I P R E K T. I'm gonna call, hey, look, we're gonna come back to them. We're gonna come back to them. Hell yeah, we're gonna, we gonna come back to them. Alright, here we go. Alright, we're gonna go to this church right here. Here we go. 
Okay. Hey, Jared, right? okay. <laughs> right, this is based on Matthew 10, 16, which says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. So we are the Sherpa doves. <laughs> not quite, not quite. First Corinthians. I'll, 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 I'll give you guys. I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys all an out. You can change them in, in a week if you want to. <laughs> I'll change them in a week. Go ahead. Here we go. Oh, this one's about to be. This one's about to be drenched in Bible. <laughs> also, not 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 exactly uh, First Corinthians, but like I said, I'll give you guys all an out in a week. Uh, yeah, you guys all have another chance. So uh, your homework is by next Wednesday, come up with a uh, a name that you're gonna go with for the rest of the summer. <laughs> all right, so we just we just named our church, um, and this is I tell you uh, when I was. Um, if you look at any, if you look at any team, you know basketball, football, uh, any any team, uh, they always tell you to play for the team on the front of the jersey and not the name on the back. And so, on the name of the back of the jersey is normally your name, right? And so, you know, as we're talking through uh, the other day, just as going through brutal facts. Well, if you look at the brutal facts, like if I looked at the uh, the number of students at NC State, that's thirty four thousand, right? Or if we just go to South Campus, that's like. Three, three or four thousand right, at, right in South Campus where, you know, we're responsible for. So if I'm looking at that, I'm like, man, that number's way too big. There, I'm one person. But as I look at the church, as I look at my team around me, I'm thinking, hey, we got this. We got this. We can make a real impact here. And, and really understanding that your church is going to come together this summer and do something amazing. You guys are going to come together and you guys are going to chase literally a thousand you guys are going to go for, you know, you're, we're trying to see a movement happen. And it's going to, you know, got to ha ha have it happen right here with these churches. Let it start with these churches. Um, and so as we go on, let's talk about another aspect. Uh, Colossians 3, 16. All right, here we go. Colossians 3, 16. Can I get somebody to read that for me? Go ahead, Josiah. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, speaking and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs and spiritual songs, and singing in your heart. All right, so here, here's something we can park, right? Uh, we're going to worship uh, by singing at this point, right? Um, this is always kind of an awkward time for people. Everyone's like, I don't want to. I don't want anybody to hear me. You know, I don't want the person, you know, the other table singing. That's kind of throwing me off. Um, but really, this is a time where uh, if you're. Th this is where this part was transformed for me this, this semester um, in the fall. One of our churches, the Root Church, we met in um, like literally the common area of a dorm. And that, that place wasn't it, I mean, it's not big as it's really it's a really small area. And uh, Mandy Schaefer, she brings her keyboard in there every, every week, every week. She brings her keyboard in there. She's got the slides already up and she's about to lead worship. And uh, I tell you one time, uh, it's almost like Satan did not want us to worship in there. Uh, the RA came through and asked us what we were doing. We we're like, oh, we're just having church. And, she, you know, she's like, whatever. And she walked off. And then some other girl walked in. She was like, um, she's like, can you let us know next time when you're doing this? Uh, it's like, yeah, we want to be respectful to them and, and so on. So we had to start renting it. But really, it, it was so amazing how we were able to come together every week and have a time of worship. Like, uh, and gosh, I, I don't think I'm probably I, I can't carry a tune, guys. Like I, you know, singing just ain't where I'm gifted at. But having that time that we're worshiping, we're blending, we're praising the Lord together as a team after a long week. Man, that's so that's so special. Uh, so right now, you guys are going to pick a song um, and you guys are going to worship together. And before we do that, before we do that, I'll read this verse because um, I know somebody's thinking this. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your talent. I ain't read that right. Right. That 
yeah, it's not talent, right? It says with all your heart, with all your heart. All right, so right now, whether you got the talent or not, I want you guys to pick a song and I want you guys to sing it. I want you guys to really have heart with it. Um, yeah, worship together. I mean, yeah, try to, uh, try to drown out the other church beside you almost. So I'll give you guys seven minutes. Go. Damn. Um, in, a, in someone's dorm, in an apartment, uh, feel free to sing. Sing with all your heart. My goodness, God, God really appreciates that. He, you know, it, it, he deserves all our thankfulness. He, deserve, he deserves all our praise. So, well, next is baptism. I thought it was going to rain. Probably get a chance. But so, since it didn't rain, we're going to practice baptism in here, inside here. It's like, oh, man, how are we going to do this? So, uh, Matthew 28, 18 and 20. Who knows it off the top of their head and they want to quote it? All right, hit it with Justin. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. I'm talking about the name of the Father and the Son. Hey. Hey. Oh, 
Hey. So we're on key in, in that part where it says, uh, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all I've commanded you. <coughs> all right, so God's commanded us to go and be baptized. That's, one, that's a command. We should be baptized. Um, why is this necessary to practice? Uh, it's necessary to practice because some people... Um, some people are hesitant to get baptized because they don't really know what that means. Like, what does that look like? Right. You know, they, they, they can go through the lessons, but to actually um, see, hey, it's not what you think. You know, you're not going to drown. Um, you, you're not. You're, hopefully not. Well, if you do. I don't know. I don't know how bad that would be. But uh, you're not going to drown. But to understand that. Um, yeah, this is, this is something that you can practice so people can be more comfortable with it as they're getting ready to, you know, be baptized. Also, um, as people are, as we start to, just as we share the gospel with people, we share the three circles with people and, and we want to see them come to know the Lord so then they can go and they can share the three circles with people. But once they get saved, we love, for, we love to baptize them and we love for them, once they start seeing people saved, for them to baptize others. Right. So in order to see movement happen or to really see something really get going, we want to be able to practice practical things like this. And so uh, it'd be really cool after you after you guys um, after you guys go through the baptism lesson to just practice baptism. So if I could, if I can get a willing volunteer, Keegan. <laughs> I'll hold him under. All right. So there's three things really important to uh, understand. Three, three questions. Um, so Keegan has decided to get baptized. Uh, we're at Lake Johnson in Raleigh. No, we're going to Lake Raleigh. We don't go to Lake Johnson. We're going to Lake Raleigh. All right. We're both in the water. Uh, I'm going to bring my stand here. It's in the, water. in the water. All right. So floating stand. So three things I'm going to ask Keegan. Keegan, you've decided to follow Jesus? Yes. All right. Do you you, you realize your sins have been forgiven? Yes. And do you promise to never turn back? Yes. All right. So you're going to put your hand over your nose right there. You're going to grab your arm like this. So Keegan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Yay! All right. So, all right. So now Keegan has, you know, just gone through what it means, what it looks like to, what a baptism looks like. Now Keegan... Hopefully you'll be seeing someone saved. You, you know, when you get out in the gospel, you'll see someone saved. Uh, how about you practice on me? All right. Hey, Todd. It's awesome that uh, you decided to do baptism. So I'm going to ask you three questions beforehand. Um, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior? Yes. Um, do you believe that He has forgiven your sins? Yes. And you promise to never turn back and make disciples? Absolutely. All right. Can you put your hand up on your nose? Put your hand up on the arm? All right. I baptize you in the name of the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit. Hey! hey! All right, simple. All right, so decide to follow Jesus. Sins are forgiven. Never turn back. Baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, so here we go. Um, also, yeah, just partner up. Partner up. So partner up and baptize. Baptized. Here, come here. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we're not doing it. People have been baptized. We've got a good practice in on baptism. All right, so next, um, it's really, really solid. Uh, we're going to, so far we've practiced, I'll move this chair. So far we've practiced uh, baptism. Worship. Sure took a lot of love naming. Uh-uh. <laughs> took a lot of love. Right? Uh a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer, yeah. A lot of prayer, hopefully. <laughs> so maybe maybe so. So next we're gonna go through the Lord's Supper. Alright. So what a uh what a great opportunity to celebrate. Celebrate Jesus here. Um, so if we can, if I can get somebody to read 1 Corinthians 11, 
Good. So up here, I've got um, some bread and juice, and uh, back there at those tables, there is uh, juice and bread for every table. So if you guys can, oh, there we go. Thank you guys. See, look at that. I messed up. So if someone can send a representative from each church to go and grab some bread and juice. All right, so here it is. Uh, what does this look like? What does this look like? What are we doing? Uh, obviously, there's one cup. There's one, uh, one thing of bread. So, we, yeah, one thing of bread. And so, uh, what we're gonna do is we're not going to all drink out of the same cup. Uh, there's a lot of sickness going around, so we're just gonna pass it. Um, so you would pass the bread, and this bread represents the Lord's body broken for you. So you pass this around. And so this bread represents the Lord's body broken for you. So you break a piece and pass it. Uh, this juice represents the Lord's blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of him. So dip and take communion. Uh, and, and hopefully right after that time, you guys would all pray. So uh, you guys pass the cup, pass the bread. Take it all at one time together and uh, someone close you guys out in prayer. Uh, but so one, one thing to do before you guys take communion uh, before is to really before you just take it um, is to really. take. You guys really had taken that time to uh, to really do that. Um, Man, this is, I, I remember when I, was, when I was traveling with Tom, uh, you realize the importance of, of communion, realizing the importance of just remembering what God has done, what he'd already done on the cross. I know uh, being out in the gospel, um, this is something that we can't, uh, we can't like just brush over. It's like a small thing. Uh, you guys are going to be um, attacked. You're going to go through so much out there. Um, it was really good to have a good time of communion where we remember what Jesus has done for us. So uh, really take this next 10 minutes to, to really do that uh, as a team um, and, and remember him and, and someone at the church close, close each other out. Yeah, one person at the church close, in, close out in prayer. Um, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7. Would someone like to read that for me? Any volunteers? God loves a cheerful giver. So, uh, last night I said, bring your, bring some money, because you're gonna give. We're gonna practice giving. And so, and so in, in, uh, in past times, uh, I've seen some churches uh, give, um, I think one church last year gave something that wasn't, um, man, I don't want to judge somebody's giving, somebody gave a teddy bear. Uh, <laughs> uh, as cute as that is, uh, let's, let's, let's talk through three different kinds of giving. Uh, scripturally, we see that uh, a tithe to the local church, right? That's very biblical, uh, tithing 10% to the local church. And we, we're going to talk a lot about that uh, in, in your boot camp, in your link manual for your respective project. There's definitely, especially y'all working at Fun Spot, there's just a, a good section about tithing to your local church while you're here at Link. 
definitely something to practice. Um, also, uh, we just read in Acts that they sold all their possessions and, and they gave as needed uh, within the within the the house church, right? And I'm not asking you guys to sell all your possessions and and let's just Which do that. Way? Maybe. I don't know. It depends on what you want to do. But there, there's also a biblical mandate of giving. So there's giving up to the tithes of the local church. There's giving in to the needs within the house church. And then there's giving out alms given to the community. Uh, and so right now you guys are going to decide as a church, how do you want to practice giving? All right. So you guys are actually going to give one of these three ways. So I'll let you guys decide. Um, Justin Dykus is going, uh, so whatever you decide, Justin or Ed or Matt or Bert, just, uh, you guys collect, or is that, is that appropriate? We do that, or ju Justin will take. <laughs> hey, uh, we ain't really got to that point yet. Um, we'll, we'll let y'all figure that out later. So, uh, yeah, you guys, as a church, decide how you want to give. You guys got 10 minutes. Five minutes, five minutes.